Hey everyone, so it's Hearth and welcome back to my channel. So on today's video we are going to be talking about spells backfiring. What it is, what are some of the causes of it, and how you can stop this from happening within your own personal practice. So spells backfiring is something that a lot of beginners in particular are really concerned about when they start their magical practice. The term spell backfire is often tossed around within magical communities and not many people actually sit down and discuss what it actually is, what it actually means and how you can help avoid it within your own personal practice. And because of this, when beginners go into spell work and rituals, the term spell backfire can actually sound really scary, really unwanted and a lot of the times it never goes addressed. Now before we get started, I do want to say that this video is entirely from my own personal experience and the experiences of people I've had the chance to talk to. I obviously can't speak for the entire magical community and I obviously can't speak for everyone. So this is just my personal experiences and the things that I have found massively, massively help to reduce the amount of spell backfires someone might experience. So first things first, what is a spell backfire? Well, a spell backfire, also known simply as a backfire, is where a spell, ritual, or magical working that has been undertaken begins manifesting in unwanted, unexpected ways, or the energy returns back to you. Now, this isn't solely just for spells. It can also be for rituals, ceremonial works. Any form of magical working can result in what's known as a backfire. Now backfires can manifest themselves in lots of different ways and it really all depends on what the working was for, who or what it was aimed towards, what you wanted to achieve, how long ago you did it, how you did it and the energies and spirits around. So there's lots of reasons why a backfire might occur and I will be going into that later on in the video. But the main ways that people often experience a backfire is that they will cast a spell for someone else or on someone else and as a result they will experience negative things happening within their own life because it has literally been returned back to them. It's backfired onto you. Now this doesn't just have to be negative workings, it can be positive workings as well. I'll go into a little bit as to why in just a moment. One of the other most common ways that a spell backfire can manifest is that you are achieving exactly the opposite of what you wanted to achieve. So if you undertook a working to strengthen a relationship and two weeks later that relationship just falls apart and ends up in a breakup, that may well have been caused by a spell backfire. Another good example is if you did a spell or working to achieve a promotion. You've been working towards it, it seems like it's going to happen and then all of a sudden you get fired. That could well be a spell backfire. As you can see, the end result of a spell backfire is often negative things happening around you or negative outcomes manifesting from a working that was meant to be positive. Now the idea of spell backfires can be really scary, especially if you're a beginner and maybe you don't know what's causing it or you don't know how to stop it from happening. So I'm going to go into the whys a spell might backfire as this can sometimes help give you a little bit of insight as to what you are doing that might be causing a spell to backfire onto you. So why do spells backfire? We've learned about the how they can backfire, but why do they backfire? What causes it? So there are lots and lots of different reasons for why they backfire, and I'm definitely not going to be able to cover every potential reason in this video, but I do have some of the most common reasons that a lot of people might experience. So the first reason is that spell work has been done on another person. Now this might be for positive, it might be for negative. That doesn't entirely matter all that much. Now when spell work is done on an individual, if the person undertaking that working doesn't know if they have any protections, shields, wards, angels, demons, spirits, ancestors protecting them, you might end up interfering with energies that you didn't realise were there. And this is one of the biggest reasons why spells on people might backfire. If you're undertaking a working on someone and they have ancestors protecting them, any real working that is sent at them, those ancestors will protect the person that is part of their lineage. And because of that, often workings will bounce back to the person who sent them. 
Now it doesn't just have to be ancestors, it can be spirits in the area, it can be um, energy spirit guides, it can be familial spirits, it can be demons and angels and anything that's protecting them and shielding them. It can also be magical wards, protections, charms, talismans that are protecting them. And because of this, when you send energy for positive or negative towards this individual, you might find that that energy bounces straight back to you and can negatively impact your life, even if the working was designed to be positive. Now, doing this working on anyone can have this result happen. It is largely found within practitioners, though. You'll often find that fellow witches and magical practitioners will have much stronger shields, protections, wards, ancestors, angels, spirits, whatever it might be that is protecting them. But it's not just practitioners and witches. This can also happen with day-to-day -day people, just normal people who maybe don't know anything about the magical and spiritual planes. All of us, even if we don't know it, have ancestors, have spirits around us, even spirit guides protecting us at all times. It's just that you might not realise that they're there if you've never really looked into the spiritual aspect of life. And so you'll often find that some people have stronger protections than others, but doing a working on anyone has the potential of it returning back to you. Now I'm not going to preach to you and say don't do workings on other people because you are free to do whatever you like, but if you are concerned about backfiring spells, undertaking workings on other people is a way that this can happen. Now there are ways to avoid this that I will go into in the next section of the video. But I will say that if you are going to be doing negative workings on an individual, you are more likely going to get backfire as the spirits, ancestors, spirit guides, familiars are going to be aware that it's negative energy being aimed towards them. And so they are more likely to put up a stronger defence for negative energy than they are for positive energy. So although it can happen for positive intention and negative intention, you are more likely going to experience it with negative intention. But you do you, whatever Whatever you want to do within your magical practice, you are completely free to do that. So the next reason it might happen is if there are any protections, shields, wards, whatever it might be, on a property, on a business, on a space, if you are planning on doing a working to impact it. So if you are wanting to do a working to improve someone's business, if they have protections around that property, you're likely going to find that your working is going to return straight back to you. This also applies to houses, vehicles and anything else that might have protections on it. If anything has a protection around it, you are more likely going to get a backfire from that working. It all depends on how strong that protective energy is. So that's why a lot of people do protect their books of shadows. They protect their spell work and their ritual space because it does stop this negative energy from impacting that area or those items. Another reason why you might get a backfire is if you are asking for something that simply isn't possible. Now I don't mean unlikely, I mean things that are not going to happen. So a few examples of this are if you are unemployed, you're living in England, you are a minor and you're unable to actually own a property and you aren't going to have any money coming in and you're not going to become a millionaire but you do a spell so that you can live in a Beverly Hills mansion by the end of the year. The reality of that is it's not going to happen. All spells require a potential for it to manifest in order for it to do so. And if you are a minor and you're not legally allowed to own property and you also have no way of earning that money, it's very, very unlikely you're ever going to be able to get a Beverly Hills mansion for you to live in by December. It just isn't going to happen. Another example would be saying in a petition that you wanted to live on Jupiter. The simple fact is, is that you're never going to be able to live on Jupiter. There's lots of reasons for that, but it's never going to happen. So if you're wishing or you're wanting to achieve something that isn't ever going to be able to happen or it isn't able to happen within the time frame that you've set, so if you're not in a relationship and you've done a spell to be married by the end of the year, that's very, very unlikely to happen. Wedding planning takes a long period of time. You also need to be in a relationship that's generally long-term and stable. And so if you are doing a spell for this in June and you want to be married by December, it's 
not really likely that that's ever going to manifest unless everything lines up perfectly in your life. Now these spells are okay to do, and a lot of the time nothing negative will ever come from it, but the energy that you're sending out has nowhere to go. It has nothing to do, it has nothing to manifest, because it can't manifest what you're after. Now about 90% of the time this energy just pitters out, it just returns back to the earth and it's gone. But in some cases you might find this energy ends up coming back to you because it knows it can't do what it needs to do. And so you might find that you have negative things happening within your life after you've done a working that simply isn't possible. So another way that I've known backfire to happen is if someone hasn't released energy properly. Now this is often done if you are raising energy and you don't release that energy fully, you might not see your working manifest because it doesn't have enough energy, but you have all of that energy stuck around in your space. Now this often happens if you are doing a negative working on another person, on a situation, whatever it might be. If you're not releasing all of that energy, you're not getting rid of it, it's gonna linger in your life. And because of that, people that don't release energy when doing curses, hexes, jinxes, crosses, whatever negative intention it might be, they might find that that negativity ends up infiltrating their own lives. So while their target situation or their target person is continuing on like nothing ever happened, you might then be experiencing that negativity within your own life. Now spells backfiring in this way doesn't have to just be when you're doing negative workings. Sometimes it can be when you're doing positive workings, but it just doesn't work out the way you were expecting. So if you did a spell for your best friend to help them find love and you didn't release that energy effectively, that energy is going to stick to you like glue and quite quickly you might find that you are the one that's attracting all of these people that you didn't want to attract. Another example of this would be if you did a communication spell with your sibling and it was designed to be a short term working just to help ease the tension over a family gathering so that you guys could just talk without arguing and you haven't released all of that energy and so rather than just having more easy communication they won't leave you alone. If you're waking up in the morning and you've got 50 text messages from your sibling that just won't leave you alone after you've done a communication spell, it may well be that you've not released that energy and this could also be considered a spell backfire. Now, not everyone calls this a spell backfire, but I know that in some circumstances it definitely could be considered so, especially if, for instance, you're married and you did a love spell for your friend to help attract potential partners into their life, and next thing you know, it's you getting all of the messages from random people you've never met before. I think I would definitely consider that to be a spell backfire. Now this form of spell backfire often happens a lot more frequently than people might expect. It's just that not everyone considers it to be a spell backfire. So if you were wanting more customers in your business and you wanted just a boost of sales for just a couple of weeks and next thing you know you're swamped with customers that are demanding things from you left, right and centre, you might not think that that's a backfire, you might think that that working has just gone exceptionally well, when actually what's probably happened is that because you didn't release any of that energy, you've not fully manifested what you wanted to achieve and instead you're being bombarded with customers that are demanding things from you, that are wanting things, you're being pulled in a million directions, and ultimately it probably isn't going to be something positive for your life. So overall, it'll likely end up being a negative spell backfire. So the last main reason why your spells might backfire is actually the one that I hear about the most. And that is when you have negative energies and negative spirits affecting that working. Now those energies and spirits might be in your space. It might be surrounding you and attached to you. It might be in the magical tools and items that you are choosing to use. If you have any negative energies around you before you do spell work and rituals, it's going to affect how that ritual goes. Now not all spirits and not all energies are gonna negatively impact that spell work, but if you have any negative spirits and negative energies around you in your tools, in your space, you might find that their energy is gonna interact with the energy you're putting in, and ultimately, you're gonna have a negative result. 
Now I've had people come to me asking about this on many an occasion. It's often a case of, I did a spell to get more money and now I'm fired. Or I did a spell to improve my relationship, but I got dumped. What happened? And the often cause for this is that there's something negative within their environment attached to them or in their tools before and during that working that's ultimately caused it to have a negative outcome. Now there are ways that you can resolve this, but that is one big one that I think a lot of people skip over and it's something that's definitely very significant and that's why it's really key to make sure that your space and yourself is nice and cleansed and also protected before you start doing spell work and rituals. Now there are likely far more reasons for spell backfire than just these. These are just the ones that I've had people mention to me or that I've spoken to people about over the past years. And so for me, they are most commonly found within at least the magical community around me anyway. But how can you go about stopping spells and rituals from backfiring? Is there anything you can do? What can you do to limit this from happening? Now, one of the biggest questions that I get about spells backfiring is, how can I guarantee a spell won't backfire? Or are there any spells where I can't have a spell backfire? And the simple fact is, is that there are no spells, no workings, no rituals where a spell backfire is guaranteed not to happen. They simply don't exist. Because it's not the spell itself that causes the backfire, it's the factors around it. So I could do a spell and not have any backfire, but if you do it and don't release the energy fully, you might have a backfire. If I do a working on an individual and I don't get a backfire, if you do the same working on a different person with different energies, different protections, different guides, you might get a backfire from that working. It's very dependent on situations, energies, and people. And because of that, I can't give you any foolproof spells or foolproof things that are gonna stop a spell from backfiring because there's simply no way to guarantee it. But there are some things that you can do which will limit the likelihood of it happening. Now the first is all about doing spells on other people or on other people's behalf. So this may be negative workings, it might be positive workings. Any working done on an individual is going to have more chance of backfiring than if you were to do a spell on a situation. So it might be worth tweaking what you want the working to do. So for instance, if I wanted to do a prosperity spell on my friend, rather than aiming the spell directly at them, I might instead aim it towards situations. So if I know that they are going for a job interview, I might, rather than doing a prosperity spell on them, instead aim to do a success working on the job interview. That way you're not directly interfering with their energy and their spirits, guides, ancestors, angels, whatever it might be, is not going to attempt to fire it back at you because you're not aiming it at the person directly. Now this can be done for negative workings as well, where instead of doing a curse on a person, you instead curse an object or another item that they interact with. So there are ways to get around this for positive workings and also for negative workings. Now another good thing you can do if you're aiming to do a positive working on a person or even a negative working on a person is to actually do spell work on an object that they carry around or that they wear. So a piece of jewellery is a really great thing to do in this instance. Now I will say that negative workings aimed at a person or situation are more likely to backfire because protections are more likely going to protect against something negative than against something positive. But that's not me saying that you shouldn't do negative workings. Everyone's practice is going to be different. You do you. But just take note that any working aimed at a person is more likely going to backfire than if it's aimed at an object or a situation. So it's just something to take note of. So the next thing you can do is to ensure that what you're aiming for is likely going to happen. Any energy that's left lingering around in the universe is not going to know where to go if what you're aiming for isn't possible. So if you've done a spell to bring dinosaurs back to life, you are not going to get that working manifested. So it's important that when you go into that working, what you're wanting to manifest is likely to happen. If it's not going to happen, then that energy has nowhere to go. And although yes, most of the time it does just dissipate into nothing, sometimes that energy will come back to you again. And in that way, you might find that you're getting negative responses from that working back on yourself because the energy simply didn't know what to do and it didn't know what to manifest. 
Now the next way that you can stop backfiring from happening is that you release your energy effectively. If you're raising energy for a working, you definitely need to be able to release it all. Now this definitely comes with time and practice and if you're finding that you're getting working after working after working where you are feeling the results that you aimed for someone else then it could well be that you aren't effectively releasing all of that energy so it could be a case of going back and trying and practicing and practicing till you are able to release it effectively. It might also be that you need to be doing some cleansing baths afterwards and some self cleansing to help get rid of any of that excess energy. But the other issue with not releasing your energy effectively is that that working might not manifest in the way you want it to. So if you're finding this happening a lot, it's well worth going back and making sure that you can fully release your energy before you start doing workings again to kind of stop this negative thing from happening. Now another great way to stop backfires from happening is to make sure that you, your space and your tools and items are thoroughly cleansed before you do a working. Now a lot of paths actually do talk about cleansing baths and self-cleansing rituals before you undertake a spiritual working or before you undertake a spell and ritual and I think this is a fantastic thing that they include within their practice because immediately that helps to limit this form of backfiring from ever happening. Now especially nowadays with the rise of very mass produced books, they often talk more about how to do a spell than how to protect yourself from backfiring and so a lot of them actually miss out this key step. A lot of people think that cleansing isn't important when actually cleansing can be exceptionally important to stop backfires from happening. So between workings and before you do a spell it's important to cleanse your space, it's good to cleanse yourself and it's also exceptionally good to cleanse your items. If you are doing a spell and you are adding in store-bought crystals that you don't know who's touched them, you don't know where they've been and you haven't cleansed them, you are essentially inviting in unwanted energies into that working. Now this can happen for all intentions and all workings. It can happen for curses, hexes, jinxes and crosses where that energy might go, ha, I'm going to change this so it's positive. So you might have done a negative working on someone and suddenly their life is all sunny and roses and your life is suddenly become a lot more difficult. And this could also be because of this negative energy or unwanted energy and spirits being attached onto that working. Now a lot of paths and traditions do talk about self-cleansing and I do find this to be particularly important. Especially if you are doing any higher workings, it's good to have a cleansing bath or a cleansing ritual beforehand to make sure that there are no energies clinging onto you, your items or your space when you're doing a working. Now a lot of people do cast circles before they do spell work and ritual and although circles aren't a requirement for spell work, it can be exceptionally useful for protecting your space from spirits and negative energies and a lot of people tend to forget that when they choose to to not do circles. Now I'm not saying that you have to cast circles for everything or anything to be able to avoid backfires but it majorly helps. If you've cleansed your space, you've cleansed an altar if you have one, if you've cleansed yourself and you've cleansed any items that you're going to be using, if you then put up a protective bubble to protect against any negative energies, any unwanted energies and spirits, you are then stopping anything from attaching itself to that working after you've done a cleansing to get rid of anything. So it's kind of a double layer of protection. You've cleansed out anything that might be affecting that working and you're then stopping anything new from attaching itself to that working. So it's kind of a double layer. Now circles are also great in the fact that it helps you raise energy really effectively and when you release that energy from the circle, generally all the energy tends to go with it. So you're kind of killing two birds with one stone here. You're going to be able to more easily raise and release energy, but you're also going to be able to protect your space from any interfering energies. Now I do want to say that if you are new to witchcraft and magical practices, that backfires don't happen all the time. Some people will go through their entire magic magical practice never experiencing a backfire. Possibly because they've never done any workings that would likely manifest in a backfire, they've never noticed a backfire if it happened, or they have been very exceptionally careful with what they've been doing. They've been cleansing everything, they've been releasing their energy effectively, and so on and so on. 
Some people might experience a lot of backfires, other people might experience not at all. It's not something that everyone experiences all the time either. If you've experienced a backfire, you might be able to take a step back and look at the reasons why that happened and then take steps to avoid that from happening in the first place. It's definitely not something that you should be really scared about. Backfires can be solved. If you've had negative results from a working that was meant to be positive, you can do some spiritual cleansing, some self-cleansing to help remove any of that negativity from your life. If you've done a working and it's say a long-term working like a jar or a doll or a sachet, if you're finding that you're getting negative results from that working, whether because it was aimed at someone that has protections or maybe it's because there's negative energies attached to it, you are able to undo that working to release that energy and stop the negative aspects from happening. There are things you can do to reverse the actions that a backfire has taken. And so it's definitely not something to be really, really scared about. But I do think it's definitely something to be mindful about. Because a lot of the time, books being published don't even mention the potential of backfires. And so a lot of beginners are really surprised and confused when a backfire happens. Or you find those people who are exceptionally fearful of backfires and it hinders their magical practice because of it. It's definitely not something to be really scared about. It's definitely not something that you should avoid doing spell work to avoid. But it's definitely something to take into consideration and that's why a lot of workings should have a lot of thought before they are undertaken. So if you can, you can avoid getting any negative results from these workings. Now some people do believe that these backfires come in specific quantities. So I personally believe that a backfire is like for like. That whatever energy you send out, if it comes back to you, it's going to come back to you the same. That same energy is going to come back to you, but it might just affect you differently than the way you sent it out. Some people of different beliefs and different traditions believe that it might come back threefold. So three times the strength that you sent it out. Some believe it's sevenfold, some believe it's eleven, thirteen, there's loads of different traditions out there. When it comes to this, I'd say it entirely depends on personal belief. For me, I've not experienced too many backfires, not that I can remember anyway, and most of them were like for like energy. Other people might experience threefold energy coming back. I find it entirely depends on the working that you've done and how much energy you've put into it, the specific intention of that working, and also why it was sent back to you. An important point to make is that if you are aiming a working at another practitioner, not only might you get it back from backfire, but you also might find that they decide to send a return to sender working at you. Now these workings are designed to take that energy and to send it straight back to you. But some people do add a little bit of kick in there to make it go back to you just a little bit or maybe a lot stronger than you intended it to come at them. So it's definitely something to take into consideration as well. But if you're just getting started in magic and witchcraft, don't let it hold you back. Just make sure that you're aware that it might happen and you take into consideration the things you can do to help resolve it. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope that you found it useful. I do have a question for you guys, and that is, have any of you ever experienced a spell backfire? And if so, any details surrounding that could be really useful to anyone else who maybe hasn't experienced one yet or hasn't experienced it in the same way that you have. So let me know if you've had any spells backfire on you. That would be really interesting to know. If you do have any questions, comments, concerns, video ideas, or just want to chit chat with the community down in the comment section, feel free to post a comment. And if you do enjoy the magical content on this channel or in this video, feel free to hit subscribe. I do post new magical content every Wednesday and every Saturday at 6pm. So I hope you guys have a marvellous magical day. I hope that all your magical workings are successful and I will see you in the next video. Bye!